Welcome back ladies and gentlemen to our channel where we uncover fascinating stories from history. Today, we delve into the chilling world of one of the most iconic figures in history, Vlad the Impaler. Before that I hope you subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell to never miss an episode. Now let's get started. The story of Vlad the Impaler and his encounters with the Ottoman Empire is a long and tumultuous one, filled with power struggles, battles, and a relentless determination to protect his land and people. Let's delve into this gripping tale. Vlad III, also known as Vlad the Impaler or Vlad Dracula, was born in 1431 in Sigisawara, Transylvania, now part of modern-day Romania. He belonged to the House of Draculesti, a ruling family in the region of Wallachia. From an early age, Vlad witnessed the ongoing conflicts between his homeland and the mighty Ottoman Empire, which was rapidly expanding its territories in Southeast Europe. Vlad II, Dracul, the father of Vlad the Impaler, ruled as the Voivode of Wallachia during the tumultuous period in the mid 15th century. Vlad II faced many challenges and power struggles within his kingdom. These competing factions sought to control the emirate and exploit political weakness, which led to his overthrow from power. In order to secure Ottoman support to restore his power, Vlad II agreed to send his two sons, Vlad III and Radu, to the Ottoman court as hostages. This was a common practice at the time, intended to ensure the loyalty of vassal rulers. Thus, he regained his authority again with the help of the Ottoman Sultan Murad II in that era. The young princes spent several years under Ottoman control, experiencing the cultural and political influence of their captors. Radu, often referred to as Radu Chel Frumos, that means Radu the Handsome, thrived in the Ottoman court, and he embraced the culture, language, and religion of the Ottomans developing close ties with key figures, including Sultan Mehmed II. Radu's loyalty to the Ottomans grew, and he became a trusted ally of Sultan Mehmed later. In contrast, Vlad III harbored a deep resentment toward the Ottomans due to their captivity and the hardships he endured. His experiences fueled a fierce determination to resist Ottoman domination and protect his homeland of Wallachia. Vlad's time in Ottoman captivity which was marked by harsh conditions and witnessing the power struggles within the court, further solidified his opposition to Ottoman influence. During his reign as Voivode of Wallachia, Vlad II faced numerous challenges, both external and internal. His decision to align with the Ottoman Empire in order to protect Wallachia from Hungarian aggression had garnered him both allies and enemies within his realm. One of the groups that opposed Vlad II's rule were the Boyars, the noble class of Wallachia. The boyars were displeased with Vlad II's policies and alliances, particularly his close ties to the Ottoman Empire. They viewed him as a puppet of the Ottomans and resented his rule. In 1447, while Vlad II was away from Wallachia, his brother Vladislav II led a rebellion against him, with the support of the boyars. Vladislav sought to overthrow Vlad II and seize power for himself, capitalizing on the discontent among the nobles. Upon learning of the rebellion, Vlad II hurriedly returned to Wallachia to confront his adversaries. However, he found himself outnumbered and faced with a formidable challenge. The boyars, along with Vladislav, were determined to remove him from power. In the ensuing conflict, Vlad II's forces were killed and he was captured by the boyars. The exact circumstances of his death remain somewhat unclear due to limited historical records. However, it is believed that Vlad II was assassinated by his captors, likely through a betrayal or a plot orchestrated by the boyars. The assassination of Vlad II Dracul marked a turning point in Wallachia history and had significant repercussions for his family. His death left a power vacuum in Wallachia, further fueling the political instability and power struggles that would shape the reign of his son, Vlad the Impaler. After the release of Radu and Vlad the Impaler, Radu remained at the Ottoman court due to his loyalty to the Ottomans while Vlad III returned to Wallachia and assumed power with the help of the Sultan Murad II. Hunyadi Janos, along with other Hungarian nobles, eventually launched a military campaign against Vlad III. Their motivations included not only concerns about Vlad's brutal tactics, but also political calculations and rivalries within the region. Hunyadi Janos and his forces invaded Wallachia, seeking to remove Vlad III from power. The conflict between Vlad III and Hunyadi Janos reached a critical point when Vlad's forces were outnumbered, and his capital, Targoviste, was captured by the Hungarian army. Vlad III was forced to flee, and Hunyadi Janos installed Vladislav II. 
he was forced to flee to Moldova, where he lived under the protection of his uncle Bogdan II until his uncle was assassinated, which made him flee with his cousin from the country, in the same year that Sultan Mehmed II assumed power in the Ottoman court. Because of his hatred of the Ottomans and Mehmed II, Vlad III returned to John Hunyadi, the sworn enemy of the Ottoman Empire, to share his hatred of the Ottomans, as Hunyadi admired Vlad III and decided to support him to restore his rule from Vladislav II. In the year 1456 AD, a battle took place between Vlad III and Vladislav II, where he restored his rule by killing Vladislav II. In 1456, Vlad III seized the throne of Wallachia and got rid of his father's killers by inviting them to a feast on the occasion of Easter, where they were arrested and the great princes were executed by impalement in front of their families. Vlad earned his chilling moniker, the Impaler, due to his preferred method of execution. He would impale his enemies on long, sharp stakes and display their bodies as a warning to anyone who dared to cross him. This gruesome and sadistic act aimed to instill fear and discourage potential threats. Vlad was hating beggars, and he is said to have invited all beggars to a great feast in a wooden hall, and when they entered the hall, he ordered the doors to be locked and everyone inside burned. Vlad knew about the relationship of the boyars with the Saxon agents in the Transylvania region of Hungary, so he decided to get rid of them under the pretext of conspiring against him as he decided to attack their cities and kill them, where he executed 30,000 people with the impalements and sat at the dining table among the deads to eat his food, so that this would be a warning message to those who conspire against him. During that period, Vlad was committed to paying annual tribute to the Ottoman Empire, but he was late in paying tribute for the last two years since 1459 AD. The Ottoman Sultan Mehmed II sent a message ordering him to pay the tribute and send 500 people from the Wallachia to volunteer in the Ottoman army, as Wallachia belonged to the Ottomans. Vlad refused the orders of the Sultan and ordered the Sultan's messengers to take off their turbans out of respect for him, and when they refused, he ordered to kill them by nailing their turbans on their heads. This is what led to the collapse of the Wallachia relationship and the Ottoman. Vlad prepared to fight the Ottomans, but Sultan Mehmed II offered him to come to Istanbul to negotiate. Vlad sent a message to the Sultan informing him of his inability to pay the tribute and that he had no objection to coming to Istanbul, where he asked him to send an Ottoman Pasha to rule in his stead during the period in Istanbul to meet the Sultan for fear of the Hungarians seizing Wallachia during his absence. Sultan Mehmed II realized Vlad's lie as he was preparing to fight the Ottoman Empire with the help of the Hungarians. The Sultan sent 1,000 horsemen led by Hamza Pasha across the Danube to seize Wallachia and capture Vlad. Vlad knew about the Sultan's plan, so he prepared an ambush for Hamza Pasha's knights at the mountain passes, where he managed to kill many of them and capture the rest, including Hamza Pasha, and ordered to be executed by impalement, leaving them hanging along the road leading to the capital. Vlad took advantage of his knowledge of the Ottoman language and disguised himself as an Ottoman commander with his soldiers and went to a fort called Fort Georgia and asked the guards of the fortress to open the door for him. When he entered the fort, he killed all the Muslims inside the fort because they were helping Hamza Pasha. Then he attacked all the Islamic cities in Bulgaria because of their help to the Ottomans, killing nearly 25,000 Muslims. This is what made Mehmed II leave his military campaign in Greece to prepare a large army that he would personally lead to fight Vlad, accompanied by Radu, Vlad's brother. When Vlad learned of the arrival of the Sultan and his army, he fled to and hid in Benari Castle. When the Sultan and his army arrived at the capital, Targovist, he found it completely deserted, and nearly 20,000 people were found hanging on impalements. Sultan Mehmed ordered Radu to go, besiege Vlad in the castle and eliminate him, and in return, he gave him the title of Bey and made him the ruler of Wallachia. Radu went to the castle, killed all the soldiers, but Vlad's wife committed suicide because she did not want to be captured. As for Vlad, he fled to ruler of Hungary to help him regain his throne again, but the ruler of Hungary refused this time, so he imprisoned him and accused him of high treason. In this period, with the death of Radu, this made the Hungarian ruler release Vlad to return to the rule of Wallachia so that it would not come back under Ottoman control again and be subordinate to Hungary. Vlad comes to power again, but for only two months, as the news reached the Ottoman Sultan to send a large army to get rid of Vlad. Indeed, the army is eliminating Vlad and his army forever, and they took his head to Sultan Mehmed II, where he ordered to put it on an impalement in the middle of the city. This ends the story of Vlad III, 
nicknamed Dracula. In the next video, we will talk about Dracula, a fictional character appeared in Bram Stoker's novel. This character is associated with the real Vlad the Impaler. And here the episode ends. If you enjoyed the video, hit the like and subscribe button and activate the notifications bell. For more videos, visit our channel. Thanks for watching. Meet you soon in another video.